Hey Amen. Let's stand. We'll sing page number 598, standing on the promises. On the second verse, turn around, say hi to someone. We're not shaking hands, of course, but welcome somebody to church this morning. Page 598, standing on the promises. Standing on the promises of Christ my King, through eternal ages let His praises ring. Glory in the highest I will shout and sing, standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God my Savior. Greet someone this morning. I cannot fall, listening every moment to the Spirit's call, resting in my Savior as my all in all, standing on the promises of God, standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. You may be seated this morning. Ushers, come on with those offering plates. We'll go ahead and get our offering this morning. I do have a few announcements I need to make. Uh, we will be receiving an offering at the end of the service this morning for, uh, for uh, Brother Dan Gill. Him and his wife, Miss Kelly, have been with us all week, and uh, we're, he's going to be preaching for us this morning, and so we'll take up an offering uh, for him at the end of the service. So if you want to give towards that, go right ahead. Let me also remind you, um, our online giving was used um, greatly during the coronavirus shutdown. And it is still, avail uh, still available now if you want to continue to give that way. Many of you have commented on how convenient it was and how easy it was. So that's still available. You can access that through the website if you'd like to. Uh, tomorrow morning, um, no normally on our missions work week, we would be loading up all the scriptures this afternoon and they would be taken off back towards Ohio um, shortly after that. But uh, due to uh, the size of the project and just scheduling and all of that, uh, the scriptures are still sitting downstairs in the fellowship hall. And I love the smell of coming in smelling ink and paper. I don't know. It just brings back memories, I guess. I don't know. But that's where they're all right now. And uh, there's a semi-truck coming tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. And now they're all on the pallets. Brother Dan Gorman's going to be using his machine to load the pallets onto the truck. You are still coming, Brother Gorman, correct? Yeah. <laughs> Not funny, brother. Brother Gorman will be here promptly at 9 a.m. tomorrow with his machine 
to load all of those pallets, but we do need a little help. Um, we got pallet jacks to roll them in and out, but they're very, very heavy. They're about, uh, about 2,000 pounds, I think you said, um, uh, right now. And so we need some help We're kind of pushing these things out. They need to be saran wrapped and just things like that. And so if you could be here tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. to help, we would sure appreciate it. We don't need 100 people to show up, but we need... We could use 20 people, 20 strong people to come and help us with that. So if you're available and it could be here at 9 tomorrow, please let me know. And before Brother, before Brother Jerry even asks, I will have donuts ready for you in the morning. And um, we'll make sure we, we, we have something to give you, to give you a little energy anyway, okay? And then um, I, some of you will be coming and going throughout the week. We're back to kind of a normal schedule. But tomorrow at noon, there will be a funeral here. Uh, Brother Steve Henderson's mom passed away last week. And um, they, the funeral will be here tomorrow at noon. Most of you don't know who she is. Many of you don't know who he is. Uh, but he's been saved for just a little while. And um, he's asked if we have the service here. So there'll be a small funeral service here tomorrow at noon. And so if you have something planned in the building, uh, you'll need to get with me and reschedule that because it won't be able to take place tomorrow um, in the early afternoon, okay? And then um, Brother Bobby told me that he got a phone call from the softball league, and uh, they're trying to put together about a month or six weeks worth of schedule uh, for the softball team. And so um, Brother Bobby is not able to play this year, and uh, he's kind of down. He, he hurt his leg, hurt his knee, and so he won't be able to do that. But we are interested in seeing how many people are still interested in, in playing Bob. I assume it'd still be on Tuesday nights. It would be. All right, so if you are interested in playing on the men's softball team, then you need to, we're going to be a meeting right down front, right on these front two pews. As soon as the service is over, uh, don't, don't forget about that. And I'll try to announce it again at the end of the, end of the service, but I may forget. But um, if you're interested in playing and you think you can make your schedule work with that, we need to see how many people we have that are available. And we'll have that meeting as soon as the service is over. Brother Bob will take care of that. And so be right there in just about five minutes after the service, okay? And then, um, uh, let's see here. There will be a... Uh, I said funeral at the end of the service, but that was supposed to be offering at the end of the service. Um, there'll be no funeral today, just so you know. All right, I think that's everything. Wasn't well, it a good week? Wasn't yeah. well, it? I so enjoyed it and got a lot done. I cannot believe we were done Thursday afternoon. I don't know. You, you people are insane, I guess, is what it comes down to. But 300,000 John and Romans uh, in the Korean language, ready to go to the mission field. What a... What a blessing that is. Thank you for all of your help. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So every year there's, there's new people that come to the Missions Work Week. Visitors that have come for a few weeks always end up coming and getting to know people. And, and uh, it was just a good week, uh, good attitudes and cooperation between everybody. And uh, it's the one week of the year I, I get to yell at people. And, uh, and most of you take it pretty good. So some of, maybe not, I don't know. But thank you for all of your hard work. BPS workers, thank you for all your hard work as well. And uh, they were here from the start to finish every single day. And uh, so you make sure you get by and thank them, okay? Brother Bob, how about asking the blessing on the offering this morning, please, sir? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to be in your house. We're thankful for the privilege we have to be among so many people that love you. Lord, now that I'd ask that you'd bless this offering, I heard in a song this morning, you lend us us breath. You own everything we have. Help us to be honest with what we have before you. For I ask it in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Just before they, she plays the offering, go ahead and receive the offering. Shannon, come this way. I'm going to have you sing it just after the offering. I need to make one more announcement about our Bible conference. Um, that is going to be in July, at 13th through the 16th. And I hope you've got your calendars marked. There's no morning services, just evening services. And they will start at 6.30. Choir, we'd love to have a good show and maybe even have a, have a, a, a good show. I mean, a good show of attendance is what I mean. Not like a good performance. But um, we'd love to be able to use you that week. Uh, the speakers for this year's Bible conference are going to be Brother Brent Logan. Brother David Brown, Brother Andrew Ray, and then Brother Rob Carlson was supposed to come, but he can't get it into the country. He's from Canada, and so he's had to reschedule. And so Brother Tony Finney will be our fourth preacher this year for the Bible Conference. Most of you all know who Brother Finney is. He's been here several times. And the theme this year is going to be In Christ. All right, that's the theme. Okay, go right ahead.
before the throne of God above. I have a strong and perfect plea, a great high priest whose name is love, whoever lives and pleads for me. My name is graven on his hands, my name is written on his It's a beautiful song, isn't it? Beautiful song. We have been blessed over the years uh, with some good friends in ministry and uh, from all different places, but one of those places is from Milford, Ohio, in the Bearing Precious Seed Ministry, and the Lord has just knit our hearts with several of those people, and um, uh, some of them are with us today, and Brother, Brother Dan Gill is going to be preaching this morning, that, but uh, uh, Brother Tyler and Miss Shannon have come up here. We we're trying to figure it out. Is this your fifth year? And coming up here, there was a one year they took off while he was in El Paso, Texas working, but they've been with us five years now, and um, the Gills have been with us several years as well, and uh, Miss Hannah Kratzer is with them this year, and she was with us, was at our missions conference, wasn't it, Hannah? And uh, we've gotten to know her a little bit. She is an absolute nut, I'll just be honest with you, and if you want to laugh hysterically, just hang around Hannah for a little while. And she'll give you something to laugh about. But we've had such a good time. Um, just a, a fellowship. And uh, I've tried to leave them alone the last couple of days because I know they're tired. But I, I've so enjoyed the fellowship, the time we've had together. And we've asked Brother Gill if he would come uh, preach for us this morning and uh, share his heart with us. And so you open your Bibles and your minds. And let's see what the Lord will do in our heart today through his word. Brother Gill. Well, good morning. We'll get this out of the way quick. Um, I was supposed to sing with Shannon, but I didn't want to make her look bad. Um, so I decided I'd just sit up here by pastor tonight or this morning. So uh, she, she even left. I, that wasn't even any fun because she's gone. But uh, thank you so much for everything that, that we were able to accomplish this week. Thank you, those of you that came. How many actually came sometime? Wow. That's probably 90% of the people in here. So thank you so much for what you did. 
I'm already starting. It's just amazing to me to think what's down there in that basement right now. Not just the quantity of what we did, which is ridiculous. <laughs> Nobody does that. We thought our church, when we put together scripture, we did a lot, and we do about 150,000 every year. But doing 300,000, going to a place... They've never had it. They can't have it. To a missionary that if he gets it in and he gets caught, let's just be honest, the man probably dies. And he's willing to give his life. So thank you. You know, I've been asked, this isn't even part of the message, this is free. I've been asked many times, like, why do we do this? And Jesus in the New Testament, I believe it's seven different times where he is asked a question by the Pharisees or the Sadducees, different, the high priests, people that should know the Bible that they had at the time. And, and he's asked questions, and Jesus always comes back with, have you not read? People that should have known better are asking Jesus questions that they, sh they should know the answer to, and Jesus says, have you not read? Why do we do this? I can't read it, but I do know that right in here in this area, I can just tell by some of the numbers that there's John 3.16. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I want them to be able to read that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. They can read that right there in their language. I want them to turn a few pages and read for all of sin and come short of the glory of God. Turn a few more pages and read that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. I want them to be able to read, but God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And I want them to be able to read that whosoever will call upon the name of the Lord Amen. shall be saved. Amen. That's what you did this week. You're giving people <clears throat> an opportunity to read that. Amen. What better thing can you invest in? Yes, sir. About 40 hours is what we worked. Uh, 300,000 John and Romans. It's just amazing to think about it, and I thank you so, so much. But have you ever wondered, and be honest with me, raise your hand. I'll raise mine right now, because I've wondered this. Have you ever wondered, does it do any good on the other side? Have you ever wondered that? We, and Tyler can attest to this, we don't hear a lot of testimonies that come back from missionaries. Would you agree, Tyler? Tyler? We don't hear a lot. We get some, but we don't hear a lot. And what I want to do today is show you, if you'll turn to Isaiah chapter number 55, we'll begin to look at a few verses, and at the very end, I have a, um, I have a video that I want to play for you to let you know that what you just did, it does make a difference. We may never hear we may never hear from this missionary that these are going to. We may never hear of people being saved. But if God's word is true, and obviously it is, what we're going to look at today tells us that it does some good. And I can stand here and promise you that with everything in me because of what God's word says. For time's sake, we're, just, we're not going to read all of Isaiah chapter number 55. We're just going to look at two verses. And that's verses number 10 and 11. And then we'll read and then we'll pray. It says, For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth in bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. 
it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you so much. It's been a busy week, and I'm sure many of us in this room are still tired today. But I ask, Lord, that you would help us to put all that aside and to focus on what you have for us. Help us to focus on your word and the importance of what we've just accomplished, what you've allowed us to accomplish. And I thank you so much for it. Thank you for Pastor Summers. Thank you for this church and their willingness to spend the time and the effort and the money on on this project to see people saved on, on the other side of the world that more than likely we'll never meet. But God, I thank you so much for the privilege of what we're able to do. Quieten our hearts now, please, our minds, and help us to focus on what you would have for us, that every one of us in here would gain something from your word today and be drawn closer to you. God, if there's somebody here today that doesn't know you as their Savior, I pray that you would prick their hearts today and that they would come to know you before they leave this building. I love you, Lord, and thank you for everything that you've done for us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I want you to notice verse number 10 and 11. At the end of verse number 10, after the word eater, we have, let's, let's test your grammar skills. What's after that word? A colon. Thank you. Somebody knows their grammar. We have a colon. So that, obviously that tells us verse 10 and 11 are, are one big long sentence, which means that the thought is the same. So it's talking there that for as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and goes on. And then it says, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. So here, in a sense, what God is doing, he's comparing his word that comes out of his mouth to the rain and the snow that comes down from heaven. So let's look this morning, and we'll take a a moment, and we'll compare the two and say, what do they have in common? What is the purpose of the rain and the snow when they come down in heaven? How does that fit into God's word that he would say, then, that that it shall not return void? First thing we that when you think of water, a very common thing is it quenches our thirst. I drank a lot of water this week. I wish I had drank a lot of soft drink, but I'm not allowed to do that anymore. I have to drink water. But the water, it comes, the rain comes down, it fills the lakes, the streams, the rivers, and then we get our, our water to drink. It quenches our thirsts. Parts of the world don't have that, that good fresh water that they can drink. We've been blessed here. We can do that. I heard stories this week and while we were out at dinner, people that have drank some water in other parts of the world that they shouldn't drink, and they have a miserable two weeks while their bodies are getting over that. But we have the privilege of having water that we can drink that will quench our thirst. What does that have to do with the Word of God? How does it tie in? John 6, 35 And it says, And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. John 7, 37 says, In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. And a very, very common story that probably most everyone in this room would know in John chapter 4, we won't, I won't go through all of it, but it talks about the woman at the well. And what did Jesus tell her at the end? You drink of this water, you'll never be thirsty again. It'll spring up wells of eternal life, everlasting life through you. So God's word promises us, as it goes down to verse number 11, says, it shall not return unto me void. You know what that tells me? Somebody's going to get their thirst quenched. Somebody in where these scriptures are going is their thirst is going to be quenched. And how is it quenched? They come to know Jesus Christ as their Savior. What a wonderful, wonderful thought and promise that that is from God's Word. If one person out of the 300,000 gets saved, it's worth every penny. Sometimes that that almost seems like when the, the dollar amount that you spent on this project and that BPS spends on paper and all of that, To to really come down to it, if one person gets saved, it's worth every penny. It's worth being exhausted, every bit of it. Because Jesus says in 737, if any man thirsts, let him come unto me and drink. Jesus says, here I am. I've got it for you. Just come and drink. 
that's what we're doing. We're introducing Jesus to people on the other side of the world that we'll never, ever meet. What a wonderful, wonderful thought it is. Second thought, just for time's sake, we'll, we'll get through these. I really want you to see the video at the end, and I, I think it will... I'll cry again. I'll just say that right now. Um, the second thing, not only does, does water quench our thirsts, but those of you that in here that grow gardens or plants or have plants and different things, if you don't have water, you're not going to grow. It's that simple. I, I, I know that the saying is, um, we, as we came up here, we saw some cornfields, and I've seen them in different places. Right now, the cornfields are nice and green. And the saying around us, I don't know if it's the same up here, is the corn should be knee-high by the 4th of July. I don't know if, if, if that's everywhere, but that's what it does say down there. Right now, the corn's more than knee-high down by we are. We've had lots of rain. What happens if that rain stops from this day, let's go to middle of September, Corn's still going to be knee-high on the 4th of July, and it's not going to grow. And instead of that nice, lush green, it's going to start to turn brown. The ground, the plants, the, 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 all the food, everything, it has to have the rain in order to survive. What's that have to do with the Bible? 1 Peter chapter 2, number 2 says, As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. I'll turn there just so I don't misquote it. Very simply says, very common verses, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be, may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. What's that teaching us? God's word makes us grow. The only way we can ever become what God wants us to become and learn what God wants us to learn is if we spend time in this every single day. If we, if we neglect it, if we stay away from it, if we, if we don't take the time to get into this book, we'll be just like those plants, that, that, that corn that doesn't have the rain and will start to brown, will start to wither, and we won't become what God instructs us and wants us to become. But if we get in here, he tells us that we can grow and we can develop and become what God would have us to become. Let me ask you the question. This is a convicting question. I don't want you, obviously, to answer this one out loud. I know we've all been stuck at home for about three months for the most part. For a period of time, we couldn't go to the grocery. Well, we could go to the grocery, but that was about it. You couldn't go shopping. You couldn't. I don't shop anyway, but you couldn't do that. You couldn't go, you just couldn't go anywhere. You couldn't go out to eat. We were stuck at home. A lot of you probably couldn't go to work. You were working from home. What a perfect time to grow. God gave us as Christians a wonderful opportunity for two months to get into his word on a day. You had nothing else to do. Why not spend time in God's word? When it, sometimes it gets so busy and so hectic in our lives, we wake up and we think and something happens and we get busy and we go through our day and we say, oh, I'll do my devotions at the end of the day. And then at the end of the day, we get tired and we fall asleep watching TV and you go to bed and you haven't read your Bible. It's happened to me more times than I care to admit, and I'm sure it's probably happened to a lot of us. But the only way we can grow is if we're going to get into his word and as First Peter chapter 2, number 2 says again, that we should be like newborn <clears throat> babes. How they desire milk, that should be our desire for this book so that we can grow thereby. And we're giving people over on the other side of the world the opportunity not only to have their thirst quenched, but also then to be able to grow. The third part, water is used for cleansing. I'm not good to be able to put them all to start with the same letter. I'm sorry. <clears throat> For cleansing. When you take a shower, when you get a bath, what do you use? Water. You wash your car, what do you use? Water. When, you, anything, when we wash our clothes, what do we use? Water. Where'd that come from? The rain and the snow that it talks about in verse number 10. So it says, and when verse number 10 tells us again that it watereth the earth and maketh it bring forth bud, that it may give seed to the sower and breed to the, bread to the eater. It's coming down. God gives it to us for a purpose. And God's word is the exact same thing. It's there for our cleansing. Psalm 119.9 says, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. 
You want to clean up your life? Get in here. That's right. It'll tell you how to do it. Not only will it will point out what's wrong, but it'll tell you how to clean it up as well. That's what we want people on the other side of the world to learn. We want them to have their thirst quenched. We want them to grow. But then we want them to learn how to cleanse, how to get that stuff out of them that they don't need there, and to be able to live the way God would have them to live. Young people that are in here, a bunch, a couple down here, I would encourage you more than anything if, that I could if, stay in that book that's in your laps right now. The only way that you'll ever be what God has you to be and to stay away from all of the stuff that this world has to offer is, is staying in that book. Please, I beg you, all over the room, stay in it. Stay in it. People on the other side of the world needs this group to stay faithful. Not only us older ones, we're not going to be here a whole lot longer. Let's just be real and honest. They've got a long time to go, and the world needs them. And the only way you can do it is by staying in that book. And then you can, cleanse up your, you can clean up your life and be what God would have you to be. Wouldn't it be wonderful? I'm not going to mention the country. Most of you know the name. Wouldn't it be wonderful? It actually, we talked about it on the trimmer. If one of these John and Romans end up in the hands of the leader of the country where these are going to, wouldn't it be great if he got his thirst quenched? And then he started to grow. Right. And, then he got, and then he got cleansed. Wouldn't it be great? You might say, there's no way. <laughs> right. My God can do anything. Yes, right. yes, sir. He can get it there one way or the other. I don't know how. In my mind, there's no way that one of those is falling in his hands. But God says, hey, I, died. I sent my son to die for him just like I did for you. He wants him saved just as much as he wants us. So I, I just, <clears throat> that thought of, of the growth and the cleansing that it offers to us. And then one last thought here as we go is, is more in relation to the snow that it talks about in verse number 10. I did some research on, on just looking up what, what is the purpose of snow. And a lot of it is just like with the water that when it melts, it fills the rivers and the streams and all the other. But one thing that the snow does that rain can't do is it insulates the ground. What it does is when, when it's really, really cold outside and we have the snow, that snow is insulating what's underneath. It's protecting the roots of plants and trees and you, you name it, whatever's underground. Animals that burrow underground, it's protecting them. How's that tie into the word of God? Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against God. How are we insulated from the things of this world that we don't need to be involved in? Right here. That's good. Yes, sir. The only way we get insulated <clears throat> is by reading this and staying in it and hiding it in our heart as this verse. It's insulating our hearts. Our heart, the Bible tells us, is desperately wicked. God says, my word will insulate that and keep you away from all the sin that this world has to offer. That's what we're offering to the other people on the other side of the world that we have the privilege of being able to experience right now. But I want you to notice one key verse or key word. <clears throat> In verse number 11, and I want you to say it out loud with me. I'll stop there. It says, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return. So in order for something to return, what has to, be, what has to happen? It's got to go out. Something can't return if, it doesn't, if it's not given out. Isn't it exciting to think that somebody over there is going to walk up to someone, some missionary is going to walk up, you just became Korean, and say, I've got something for you. What's God's word tell us? That will not return void. It's going to accomplish what God has it to accomplish in his life. I'll get that later. What a wonderful promise. But it has to be given out in order for it to return. Why do we do it? Why, do we, why is pastor asking you to come and help us load up a, 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 a semi tomorrow morning? Because we got to get it to the people that can ship it over so it can return to God and not be void. And it will accomplish 
what he has promised that it would do. The word, def- the word return actually means, I-, I love this definition that was given, to pass back to an earlier possessor. <laughs> Who possessed it originally? And it's going back, right back to him. And the lives of people that come to know him, they have their thirst quenched, that grow, that are cleansed, and then they're insulated from what this world has to offer. So I say all that, guys, if you'll get ready with the video back there. Again, the question is, does it do any good at all? This, the, 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 the testimony that you're about to see was, have you done scripture for the Ivory Coast? <laughs> Even better. This is a missionary to the Ivory Coast that we send scripture to. I want you to think about it. And I, I was hoping, I meant to ask you earlier, Pastor, and I forgot to. I was hoping that you have done scripture for the Ivory Coast. This is the only missionary to my, to my knowledge that we've sent scripture to over there that's about to give testimony of what happened over in the Ivory Coast. His name is Bob Mack. And I want you to think as this is going through, that may have been the cover that you folded. This may have been the scripture that you put in. This may have been the one that you stapled. This may have been the one that you trimmed. If you'll go ahead and play the video. We had our first service for the Bangerville Church on June 18, 2000. And very shortly after that, within the first month, I began to notice that there was a man that was coming to visit our services. And he would not be there when we'd sing the first hymn. Uh, Typically, he'd slip in as we were praying at the beginning of the church service, and I'd lift my head, I'd see him seated there in the back. And I'd think, man, I really need to talk to that man. And and when we would pray at the end of the service, I would lift my head to go look for him, and he'd already be out the door and on his way home. And this went on for a month. And I thought, I have got to get this guy. And so one Sunday morning, finally, I'd had enough of it, and when, as I was finishing my preaching, I was walking down the center aisle to that door, and I planted myself right in front of it, called on one of the men of the church to pray, and I blocked the door until he was done. And that man walked over, and I shook his hand. I said, you know, I haven't seen you for about a month. I'd love to talk with you. Can you come by and visit me this week? He said, sure. So he came the next morning. We sat down, we spoke for a little bit, but I finally said to him, I said, you know, sir, I know that you have heard the gospel because you've been visiting our church here for a month now, and because of that, at times, when I saw you seated there, I explained the gospel very clearly in my preaching. And I'd like to ask you this morning, have you ever accepted Jesus Christ in repentance and faith? He said, yes, I have. I said, really? He said, yes, I have. I said, well, how did that happen? He said, well, pastor, the first time I came to your church, you gave me a John and Romans. He said, I took that back to my house, and and, and I read it, and I accepted Christ. I said, are you telling me that you sat down and read all the way through the Gospel of John and then read all the way through the Epistle of Romans, and it all clicked for you, and you understood everything, and you bowed your head to, uh, to receive Christ? And he said, well, yes, I did read the two books, but, you know, Pastor, if you go to the end of it, you'll find there's kind of a really good explanation of the gospel there, even with a model prayer. And I said, oh, yeah, that's right. So I jumped up and grabbed one, and I was looking at it, and I said, okay, so you understood all these points? He said, yes. And and, and right there in your apartment, you prayed to receive Christ? He said, yes, I absolutely did. I said, okay. Well, you know, the Scriptures tell us that when we accept Christ, our life changes. You know, we're a new creature. That's, that's the terminology the Bible uses. So have you evidenced that in your life? Has there been a change? And he said, yes, Pastor, there has. He said, I came to this country from Togo with five other men. Our, resp- our, our job, our livelihood, is fermenting palm sap to make wine from it. That's what we do. And he says, you know, when you're doing that, when you're making that stuff, you are drinking it all the time. He said, but from the moment that I prayed that prayer. There was such a conflict in my mind. And even when I went to try to continue working with them on that, I just, I just, I I can't do this. He said, I've been telling them that that I'm ill, but I just, I I can't do it. And he said, I'm really fortunate in that they came to see me the other day and they said they want to go to the city of Subre about five hours away because they feel the market for it is better there. He said, so I told them to go. And I said, so they left? He goes, yeah, they're gone. And I said, you're still here? He goes, here I am. 
Because in my mind, I'm thinking if he's no longer doing what he came here to do, then most likely he'd return to Togo. So I said, well, why are you staying here? And he gave me this dumbfounded look, and he said, because the church is here. And I said, are you serious? You're, you're, you're going you're gonna to stay here because, because you've accepted Christ and this is where the church is? He says, absolutely. So I said, well, if you're not fermenting that stuff anymore to make wine, what are you doing to live on? How are you eating? And he said, well, you know, Pastor, I work in agriculture as well, and yet, you know, just Saturday my landlord came by, but I didn't have the money for the rent, and so I came to church on Sunday, and after I spoke with you yesterday morning, I, I was going home, and you know so-and-so who owns that field up the hill there. As I was walking by, he was there, asked me if, if I could clear it out for him, and I said, sure, and he gave me an advance, and I went and paid my rent. When I get done talking to you, I'll go clear the field, get the rest of it. So here I am talking with a man for the very first time, and he's already saved, his life has already radically changed, and God is already taking care of him because we put a bearing precious seed, John and Roman, in his hands. It is a tremendous ministry that you're doing here, and we recognize that. In our town of Bangerville, if you walk up and hand someone a John and Romans, there's a, there is a very significant chance that they're going to say, no, I already have three of those at the, ho at the house, thank you very much because we have inundated with our city with it. The intersection near our church for decades has been known as the market intersection. And then one day I heard somebody refer to it, it you'll understand the idea, as the brochure intersection in our town because of the way our church is constantly passing out the John and Romans there. And so the ministry of bearing precious seed has borne great fruit in the Ivory Coast of West Africa, and we thank you for that. Is it worth it? It's worth it in that man's life. And who knows how many others around the world. Is it worth it? All these that we're getting right? Oh, it's down there. I lost it. Is it worth it where, where these are going? Absolutely. We get one testimony like that. Every penny that's spent is worth it. So I ask you this morning as we, as we close, two thoughts. One, has your thirst ever been quenched? Have you ever accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior? He says that if you'll come to him, that you believe on me, shall never thirst. What a wonderful statement from our Savior. If you're here today and you don't know him as your Savior, your soul's thirsty. It needs Jesus Christ, and today would be a great day to accept him. Maybe, you're, maybe you realize you're not, you're not drinking of this book enough to grow. You're not getting in it to be cleansed, that you're not there to, to be insulated from the world. Maybe you need to come to an altar and get that settled today. Or maybe you just need to come and pray that God will take those 300,000 down there yes. and do that many times over in a land where we'll never be. I don't plan on going where these are going. It's not on my bucket list of places in the world to visit, but I'm glad somebody was willing to go. So thank you for the time. Let's pray. Lord, it's just awesome what's been accomplished this week. I thank you that You've given me the privilege of being a part of this ministry, to be able to send scripture around the world to people who need it so desperately. And God, these scriptures are about to go to a place where many have never had it before. Like in the New Testament where Jesus, where you, where Jesus asked the question, have you not read? These people would have to say, no, I never have. No one's ever given me one before but now we're giving them an opportunity. And I pray, Lord, that you would work in a mighty way in the hearts and lives of the people that it's going to. But God, here today as well, as there may be people that, that their thirst has never been quenched. And I pray today would be the day that they accept you as their Savior and get that settled. Maybe some need to, to realize that they need to spend more time in this book to grow and to be cleansed and to be insulated from this world. God, whatever it is, I pray that you would work on our hearts and our lives 
and that you would be pleased and honored through it all. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you, Brother Gil. Let's stand together, please.